Okay, now when we have connected all the network cabling and put the IP addresses to the right addresses in uh, the HMI, we are ready to install the compact HMI. So we take the DVD, put it into the DVD reader, and we log in to the computer as the administrator. So um, to do that, I uh, Log in as administrator to be able to install the software. And normally the the DVD starts up automatically with the software installer. If it doesn't show up, you can always go in and double click on the setup icon. So what we do is that we select install compact HMI. Then we select compact HMI server as this is the first node that we are installing in the compact HMI system. We press next. Then we put in the password. This is used when uh, the system is rebooting as part of the installation. We accept the license agreement. We wait for the system to calculate if the, we have the necessary disk space. And we can see that the space is OK, all is green. So we say that we would like to start the installation. By that now, the installation runs unattended for something like 30 to 40 minutes. And uh, after that, we will, we will uh, be back and show you the, the last steps of the installation. So now we can see that the installation is complete. It took, in this case, 24 minutes, 59 sec seconds. And uh, now we have the question here if we would like to... Uh, the compact HMI is always delivered with a, a license file for demonstration purposes. So we can use that one or we can browse to another file that we have got with our delivery of the compact HMI. In this case, we will run with the demo uh, version. So we just click Yes here. What happens then is that our licensing system is loading the file and we click load to load it into our licensing system and here we can just see which different features we got in the demo license. We can see that uh, expiration date also for the demo license. We just close the license entry and we can see that the compact HMI, the Plant Explorer workplace is automatically started so it's ready for building your application. So having done that, we have uh, the network connection. But before we can get the network connection to run, we need to set the IP address of the controller. So to do that, we need to connect to the controller via a serial cable. And uh, we use the serial cable and we plug it into the COM port 4 on the controller. And we plug it into the serial connection on the PC. If you don't have a PC with a serial connection, you can use a, a converter between USB and serial to connect. 